Hey, what's up? Galen Spring here. In this video, we're going to be doing a free SEO audit for PlaydogVT.com. This website audit will show us all the things that need to be fixed on the website in order to rank higher in Google, get more website traffic, and convert more website visitors into um, customers. So, the first thing we're going to do is go to SEMrush, take a look at the domain overview, So we can see that the website is getting some traffic. So that's great. Quite a few backlinks. Doesn't look like there's any paid search traffic at the moment, um, but we do have a, uh, a good authority score here in SEMrush. Um, so I'm just gonna mark those things down. So it looks like we do have traffic we're not currently running ads as far as I can tell. Um, we are definitely ranking for some keywords. Let's take a look at what exactly those keywords are. Okay, so a lot of brand terms. Play dog, play VT, play dog, play Burlington v VT, dog boarding, Burlington, Vermont. You're in position six for dog boarding Burlington, Vermont, Dog Daycare, Burlington, Vermont, um, position seven for Dog Daycare, Burlington. So that's awesome. There's definitely some opportunity here. Um, if you're in position seven, that means, or position six, even position eight, that means you're on the first page of Google. Um, however, you're not ranking at the top. So if you were to bump up the rank, um, increase the position for those keywords, uh, you would be getting quite a bit more traffic. And these are actually uh, marked as commercial intent keywords. Um, so that means that when, when someone's going to Google and searching dog boarding Burlington, Vermont, they want to investigate brands or services. They, want, they have a commercial intent. Um, so definitely some awesome opportunity. And let's just take a look at the domain authority we already saw in SEMrush it's 17 and in Moz it's actually also 17. So that's great. Uh, already off to a great start. Um, let's just take a look and see if you have Google Analytics installed. It's a crucial first step. It is set up. Awesome. Um, now we're just going to take a look at the uh, calls to action on the home page. So this this pop up keeps coming up. So this is a bad user experience. I would um, just decrease the frequency of this pop up appearing, and also one of the checks will be to make sure it's not appearing on mobile if. If this is popping up on mobile, that's going to definitely hurt the the rankings. Um, Google can actually um, use that, weigh that against you if you have pop-ups on mobile. So first thing we do is look for, like, what's the main call to action? So there's three call to actions here. Um, so that's not best practice. What you want is to have um, just one primary call to action. So, so right now, like these are kind of like schedule your interview, log into your Ginger customer portal. Um, those are not the main call to actions. The main call to action is whatever is front and center. So come join our team. So is that is that what you want people to do when? You, when uh, people are landing on your website, do you want them to join you or do you want them to purchase from you? Um, 
So that's kind of, that's your decision to make, but if you want people to, okay, so and this is a, the call to action's changing as well. So you don't want a, a slideshow on the homepage. What you want is a, just pick one of these images and have one call to action, the primary call to action that you want other, that you want people to take. Um, Another thing is the the colors of the button. See, like this login button, this blends in with the the dog's fur. So you want to have a, a button that stands out. Um, you know, some bright color like red, orange, green. Well, maybe not green because you have the green background here, but. Um, I would use like this image and then pick like a, you know, a bright green button or something. Um, the other thing is the phone number. So it looks like this is a, this is a telephone link. So that's good. This is a mail to link. So that's good. Um, I mean, overall the, the, the website could definitely use an update. It's it's looking like it's looking a little out of date. Um, like I would I would take these and you know move them up into the corner. I would make this menu smaller. I would um, like I said with the the button just have like one call to action in the middle. Um, if you want people to call you then you want to have a, and that's probably, that's probably what you want people to do is to call you, right? To set up daycare, boarding, training, um, maybe even to like get an application to, if you're hiring, like one of those buttons was saying, um, so what you want to do is have like the the button contain your phone number so a good example of this would be um a button that just says call us today or call us now with a, your phone number in it um 802-540-0545 and when they click that button it it uh it's a call link um so that's really that's really going to be best practice um, for the conversion rate. So you do have the click to call. Um, it's not a button though. Um, the phone number doesn't really stand out. It's kind of like pretty small font. Um, it, you do have the call to actions above the fold. However, there's just too many you just need you know just one main call to action um call to action does not stand out um i would recommend i should add some notes here um add phone number to the button Uh, well, that's going to be the same thing. If you're adding the phone number to the button, that'll make the phone number stand out. Make the button a bright color. Make it bigger. Um, it is near the center of the screen. And then one final thing that I always recommend is a something called a, a sticky button or sticky call to action and what that means is that this main button in the middle um, when you're scrolling down uh, another button will appear the same you know a, a, a duplicate of that button basically will appear in the bottom right or the bottom left corner and it'll stay there as they browse your website as they scroll down um, this is a pretty short website so yeah so this is a better example like on this page if people are opening all of these um, you just want it 
you know, right there. So that as soon as they decide to contact you, it's right there. And that, uh, you know, every, every little improvement in the conversion rate um, adds up. Add sticky button. Let's see. I didn't see any. F Let's see what the form fields are. Or you might not have any. Let's just take a look here. Okay, so you don't have. Not seeing any website forms. Oh, maybe schedule your interview. Okay, so this this button's not working. Schedule your interview is not working. So that's a big problem. Um, I'm just gonna add that up here. Let's see if this button was okay. That button's working. Schedule your interview. button is broken. Okay. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't look like you have any form fields. So fields are just a, a great way to um, make it so people don't have to call you. They don't have to email you, especially if like the mail to link isn't working, like for, for whatever reason, it's not working for me. Um, so you want to have some type of form with like name, email, phone number, message, um, and like a, a, a big submit button. And then also a, um, a message that pops up for like a, a successful form submission. Um, just as a, an alternative for people who might not be ready to talk on the phone or can't figure out how to email. Um, moving along, it does look like the logo clicks through to the home page. Um, I would add it in the top left corner, I would move it to the top left corner, make it a little bit smaller. Um, it's just taking up a lot of room. Um, and there's all this white space here that's not getting used. So um, just try to try to consolidate this and have things running horizontal across the top. I'm also seeing some kind of strange shade just in the center of the screen here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's a little bit odd. Um, so you do have the top navigation menu. Um, you could definitely use some improvement as far as just making the fonts just a bit small. Um, but it works. Move logo to top left, make smaller, make font larger. Um, no distractions above the fold. So like I said earlier, I'm not sure why the Font is different there. So, like I said earlier, um, you just want one CTA button above the fold so that people know like what's the main thing that they should be doing when they get on the website. Uh, the CMS, I mean, let's just take a look at what the CMS is. And the CMS might be fine. It might just be the, the theme that you're using that's a little out of date. So it's built with Wix. Um, 
I don't recommend Wix. I Wix is pretty easy to use, um, but that's there are some trade-offs, being that it's just uh, doesn't leave much room for um, customization. It's not really great for SEO. Um, so they, I would definitely recommend switching over to a mo more modern CMS, and that's something that I can help you with if you're interested in. Um, recommend upgrading to better CMS. Wix is a modern CMS, but there's definitely better options out there. Um, I know Wix is mobile friendly. Is responsive. Let's just let's just double check that. Yeah. Now I'm just looking to see if there's any invisible text on the home page. Didn't see any. Um, I did see a pop-up. Let's just check if that's coming up on mobile. Um, I'm going to need to put this in a incognito window to trigger the pop-up. Oh, maybe it's not mobile friendly. So we did get the pop-up. Oh, there we go. Hmm, that just took a minute. Weird. Um, not seeing the pop-up. I'm just going to let that load for a minute, just make sure the pop-up doesn't come up. Website for Flash. Making sure I'm not using Flash, which is obsolete. Um, I would definitely add an About Us page. I guess meet the team, that's your About Us page. Um, so this is more about the team. So I would add a, I would add a page that's more about like, more about the company itself, or maybe just add more information about the company to this page. So we're adding a company info to meet the team page or create a separate about us page. Let's just see if any pop-up came up. So it looks like you don't have the pop-up pop up on mobile. Great. Um, name, address, and phone number in the footer. So all you're missing is the name, uh, which is just Play Dog Play LLC. So just take that and add it right above the address. Um, and that's just so you have um, consistent name, address, 
phone number across uh, wherever your wherever else your website is listed online in like directories. Um, just important to have consistent information. Uh, terms and conditions page. I don't believe you'd need that because you're not collecting payment. I'm not really sure like if new customer registrations are not allowed. Um, okay, I'm not sure what that's about. I guess you're not allowed to sign up for this right now for some reason. Um, if you are collecting payment through whatever this is, Ginger, let's just check this out. Ginger app. So I would assume, um, I would assume Ginger app, if they have, if you're collecting payment through them, they probably have a terms and conditions page. So I'm just going to mark that. Good. You have the favicon up in the top there. Um, so definitely excess white space. Um, more so in the uh, top menu. Not too bad in the rest of the page. Um, the colors are, I believe they're consistent. I might recommend just adding, and this is, you know, this is kind of extra, but just like being a little bit more, um, colorful, like the, the logo, if, if these are your colors, like the blue the green and the yellow, maybe like incorporating those into your logo somehow. Um, but that's just kind of like an extra recommendation. And I don't believe I saw any social media. We have the Facebook thing here. I would also add a a link either like on the side or on the bottom to your Facebook page as well as any other social media profiles that you have. Next, we're looking at the website speed. Website speed is pretty important as long as your website loads faster than like one or two seconds, you should be good. Um, GT, metri GT metrics will give you a grade and usually with Wix websites, they're pretty fast. Just taking a minute to load. 
So let's continue your SSL certificate checks out. HTTPS HTTP redirects to HTTPS so your global canonical tag looks good now we're going to check the um, make sure you're not blacklisted or you don't have any malware looks good Okay, so GT Metrics gives you a B. So let's take a look at why that is. Avoid enormous network payloads. Okay. So this is another reason to select one image. When you have these multiple images um, in the slider, it creates a bad experience. This pop-up coming up again, bad user experience. And this is also just bloating the website. So having these big images and having multiple of them is slowing down the website. So this, this really should be, you should be getting an A um, if it wasn't for those images. Um, there's probably also some image optimization as far as making sure that the, whichever of these images you pick is a optimized image file size. So it's not an A. And there's definitely some room for improvement as far as um, remove to home page images and optimize image file size. Okay, next we're gonna check the robots.txt file. And there should be something to select. Oh, actually, I take that back. If your if your user accounts are not on here, then this yep. So this sh looks good. You have the link to the sitemap and the sitemap. map. So that looks good. Do you have the thing, the pages categorized? Let's just see if like this is within. Okay, so it's first level categoriza categorization. But well, that's good. That's fine. Um, next, we're going to look at the snippets. So snippets are what shows up in Google when someone searches for one of the keywords you're ranking for, and one of your website pages comes up in Google. Will be the title, URL and description um, as well as some other things potentially based on the data that you provide so we're just going to go back to that site map Put it into this 
SEO tool called Screaming Frog. And what this is going to do is pull in all of the information for each page. Okay, so you have the locations in there. That's great. Maybe someone did a little bit of optimization. Um, I would recommend adding a call to action. So like for doggy daycare, um, people are already gonna know what the brand name is. And if they're searching the brand name, they're probably gonna land on the home page. So you don't really you don't typically need the brand name in there in the title. What I would recommend adding is something like um, call us today, um, call us now, something like that. And I would put that in the description as well. The descriptions are filled out. That's good. Looks like you do have a couple missing here. Valuation pro process and day trains. And what's that? Oh, that's just the site map. So I would recommend Um, take the phone number out of your description because that Google doesn't, for whatever reason, Google doesn't like it when you have phone numbers in the snippets. If you want the phone number in the snippet, um, well, yeah, what I would recommend is just, just say, you know, call us today. It is good that you have the action verb. Um, kind of like the call to action first. So I'd recommend adding call to actions to the other meta descriptions as well. Um, overall, these are Looking pretty good. Um, so let's just go through. Metal tit meta titles exist. Um, they do contain the keywords, although there's definitely some room for improvement, especially with the, uh, the call to actions. They are optimized for your location. We've got Burlington, Vermont in there which is awesome. Um, one thing on the locations is, do you accept, do you compete with the surrounding towns, the areas around Burlington? Because if you're not just serving Burlington, if you're serving, um, you know, um, when, when ski or Williston or, um, what else is there? Colchester or Shelburne, then you can compete for those areas as well. And to compete for those, you would add another page that is specific to those locations. Um, get a little more into that later. Um, um, one other thing is you want your keywords to be toward the beginning of the meta title and the meta description. In Google, the in the search result, the keywords are usually bolded. And so when they are towards the beginning, it 
makes it really obvious and makes it more likely for people to click on them. Um, unique selling points. I did see some of those and I did see some action verbs, although I'd recommend adding more. Okay, and let's see if you're using the H1s, H2s properly. So, I'd recommend improving the H1s. The H1s should be pretty, pretty in line with the with the uh, meta, t meta title. So like doggy daycare, play dog play, Burlington, Vermont. The H1 should be so like doggy daycare, um, Burlington, Vermont. So there's adding the location in there, making sure the main keyword is in the H1. Solution policy, it looks like that's the only link. Again with the pop-up. So these should be oh, what just happened. Not sure what just happened there. So these should be working. Looks like the phone link is working. Not sure why the mail to link isn't working, but um so you, you kind of don't really have a footer. So I would add a footer that's that's kind of just like your main pages, the main pages on the website, and just put those down here as well. Links do work, though. Um, and then internal links. So let's see. Like what you want is your daycare, doggy daycare. You want some kind of link on here that goes to the boarding. So something like we also offer dog boarding. And then on your boarding page, you want a link somewhere on here that says we also offer doggy daycare and, and so on. And doing that just helps improve the the uh, authority of your website, uh, as well as help helps build relevance within your your site. Add internal links. Go back to SEMrush and look at the word count. So some of these pages are good. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, these, these look good. They're at least 300 in most cases with the exception of this one the evaluation process might not be that important of a page. Um, so something you might want to do is um, compare the pages to your competitors and just make sure that your your pages are at least um, at least a little bit longer than your competitors pages. Um, that can help you rank better as well. Um, 
I'd recommend adding an email opt-in. So if you have any kind of events, any updates, um, any reason to contact your past customers, having an email opt-in is a great way to do it. You can add some kind of incentive for them to sign up for the email list. Um, maybe like a, a 5% off coupon or something like that. Did not see any articles. So having a blog or having um, like how to content or, you know, uh, best tips and that kind of stuff on the website can help bring in more traffic. And that's, um, it's also useful content to promote on your email list on social media and so on just to stay on the forefront of your past and prospective customers mind uh, FAQ content can be a great place to start so that's just creating an FAQ page or on certain pages I think you have some of that what did I see in training? I thought I saw. Maybe it wasn't here. Oh, it's loading. So this is probably like a third-party plugin. So this is FAQ content. So looks like you actually do have that. We're just going to do a quick check on SiteLiner just to make sure you don't have any duplicate content. Okay, so the images, you do have images. They're not really high quality. Homepage image is a little pixelated. Um, it does look like it's original. It does reflect the user base demographics. Uh, I believe, let's see. So you do have a little bit of duplicate content. Dog boarding and day trains. So you just want to make sure that you're not um this is probably fine. This is more like boilerplate content. As long as it's not like the main content that's being duplicated. Um, where was I? Image topics are page specific. And images reflect the, yeah, I mean, it's dogs. Okay. I didn't see any videos on the site, but I would recommend adding videos. They can be a great way to introduce the company, introduce the team members and the business and your offerings, um, as well as provide an opt-in. And that's something that I, I, uh, usually recommend you, you do that, add that to the homepage or maybe just like the, the contact us page. But, um, that can just be like a, a great way to uh, introduce people to your company without them having to like navigate around the website. So I would recommend adding at least one video to the homepage. Um, next 
first we're going to see if you have oops that's not what I wanted to do huh can I view source oh there it is Okay, you do have OG data, so that means that it's optimized for Facebook. And let's just take a quick peek. And see what it looks like when it's shared on... Oh, it hasn't been shared on Facebook before. Okay, this, this has, so you're missing the image. Let me just make sure that that's right. Yes, you're missing the image. So when someone shares your website on Facebook, uh, at the moment there's not a image coming up. Um, so that's something that's kind of important. See OG image here. Or hmm. Oh, this looks like an old version. Of the website. Um. Hmm. For whatever reason, that needs to be updated. And we're just going to check to see if you have any schema, local schema, just provides additional information to Google that you are a local business. And that can help. Um, so I always recommend if you're a local business, adding local schema. Looks like you do not have that. Okay, back to SEMrush. Let's take a look at your um, backlinks. So I'm seeing some really good backlinks. Seven days, Champlain.edu, EVM.edu, Pet World, a lot of seven days links. The goodie pet.com, Vermont Dog Rescue. So you've definitely earned some great backlinks. Okay, this looks like spam. Spectrumvt.org with like some Arabic script in the title. Um, you m you could disavow those. They're probably probably not a big deal as long as you're not purchasing backlinks. Um, Love Burlington LCM Festival. Sometimes websites, like spam websites, just link to you without you asking, and they're just like a link aggregator websites, and it's it's not really much to worry about, but. You just want to make sure you're not actually like per going on Fiverr and purchasing, um, you know, a hundred tier one backlinks for twenty dollars, 
because that can definitely work against you. But it looks like, from what I can see here, you have a pretty good backlink profile. Some high quality backlinks, some medium quality, some some low quality, but that's okay. So all in all, the backlinks look great. Did have a little bit of spam, but that's okay. Um, so back to what I was saying about the location pages. If you if you have more than one location, if you're if you serve not just Burlington but the surrounding areas, I'd recommend adding more location pages. Uh, looks like you have all your service pages. Um, they're not linked in the footer, so definitely add those service pages to the footer and the lo location pages as well if you create those to the footer. Did you have testimonials? Okay. What our customers have to say. So that's kind of wordy. I just change this to testimonials or reviews. But this does look great. If possible, if you have like a Google business profile with stars, I would add the stars. People just like to see, you know, five out of five stars. But Otherwise, it looks great. Um, you already saw you had the backlinks, so we're just going to skip the citations. Backlink profile looks great. And the last kind of area we're going to check is... Oops, let me just fix my filter here. Is your Google My Business profile play dog play VT? Let's see what comes up. Play Dog Play Canine Care Center. Assuming that, oh, wait a minute. Play Dog Play Training Center, Canine Care Center. Are these both? Okay, these are both you. So you have two Google My Business, or Google Business Profiles. Looks like. Let's just take a closer look at those. Okay, lots of reviews. Looking really good. Um, dog daycare center, dog daycare center, dog trainer, pet boarding service. So I don't really know enough about like what, what the difference is between these locations are to really provide guidance. It looks like they're under the same categories, except the Canine Care Center is also a pet supply store. Um, so that may very well be the case, but you do have lots of reviews, lots of photos. Check the other one. Also lots of photos. 
got the website hours phone number let's look at this one address oh yep phone number um So you definitely want to get some more reviews. It looks like some of the negative reviews are coming up first because they're more recent. For the Canine Care Center. But the Training Center is doing well. Um... Okay, so you do have the listing, you have the keyword in the business name, hours provided, website. Um, if you can add a appointment link, that would be good. Um, And that's just an option in the Google Business Profile. You get the option to add a link, appointment link, and you can link that to your contact page or to your schedule, your interview. I'm not really sure what, what the best place to link the appointment page to, but at the very least, you can link it to your Contact Us page. So if you want to generate more reviews, I, let's just take a look and see. Dog Day Care, Burlington, Vermont. Looks like this is your main competitor here, oh my dog. And there's you definitely have some competition. I'm not seeing oh my dog on the map. Maybe that one's like further away. Oh, there it is. Um, so they have a lot of reviews. They have 143, and then your training center is 15. Your Canine Care Center is 48. So you can definitely still benefit from getting more reviews. Um, so if you're interested, I can help you get set up with a, uh, a review generation service. Um, and then there are certain things you can do, like when you're, you're generating, generating reviews, um, just ask customers to, to speak about um, certain topics like what comes up in bold on your cust on your competitor reviews. So ask them to talk about the staff. Ask them to talk about the customer service. Um, ask them like what services they purchased. Um, okay, let's go back. Canine Care Center. Let's take a look at the photos. So I would recommend adding a logo. We have lots of inside pictures. Okay, these are great. So this is kind of showing the inside of the store. I'd definitely add some more of these so people know what to expect when they're going to your store. Um, I would add a, 
you have the street view photo I would also add just like some outside photos maybe if the what it looks like from the the road um, parking the front of the store And let's take a look at the other one. Dun, 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 dun. The training center, I would add more photos of the location itself. So you've got lots of pictures of the dogs which is great. Um, some pictures, it looks, I mean, this looks like a pretty interesting place. There's like these ramps and it's all green. And I would just add more pictures of the outside of the location, the inside of the location, uh, pictures of the team members can be great. And Maybe pictures of like dogs getting groomed, pictures of dogs getting trained. Um, some more pictures of maybe like the boarding process. And then you want a cover photo well so there are some inside photos that's more outside photos um, I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff add some more photos of each service like the grooming And one thing I also need to check is if you're responding to the reviews. So it looks like you're not responding to the reviews. I would highly recommend that someone go through and respond to all of the reviews. And then when you get new reviews to respond to those as well. And it can be simple, something as simple as like, thank you for your business. I hope to see you again. Um, Thank you, Wesley. It was your, uh, you know, Fido was a, a great dog. <laughs> um, you know, just making it personalized. When pe when you respond to people's reviews, they're more likely to come back, um, especially if you're saying thank you and, you know, personalizing it. And it also helps provide a bit more relevance to Google as well. So Google knows that you're going in and taking care of your Google business profile. All right, in summary, there's some opportunity to run Google ads there are definitely some opportunities uh, for keywords as far as um, commercial keywords that are going to get you more customers. Um, so optimizing for those can be a big thing that will help. Um, the home page needs just a bit of consolidation in terms of um, the top menu, making it a bit more modern and um, I'd recommend making it more horizontal so it's taking up less, uh, or so there's less white space showing, uh, adding a phone number button, making that front and center, uh, fixing the schedule your interview button because that's broken, uh, making a uh, 
a sticky button, selecting a color for the buttons that's bright and big and eye-catching, uh, adding some form fields like for the contact us um, and wherever else is relevant as another way for people to send in messages to you. Um, making the font a bit larger in the top navigation menu. Uh, upgrading the CMS to something that's a bit more um, conducive to SEO. Uh, adding more company information to the meet the team page or creating a separate page. Adding a name, adding the business name to the footer above the address. Uh, again, just consolidating that top menu. Cut down white space, adding the social media icons to the footer or the sidebar. Um, consolidating the homepage images, just picking one main image, making sure it's a good high quality image and making sure that the file size is optimized. For the snippets, adding calls to action to the meta titles and the meta descriptions, making sure that they're keyword optimized and adding action verbs. Um, for the heading tags, making sure that they contain the keywords, uh, making sure that they are matching the title tags adding internal links for the site content, uh, just adding content in general, how to's, FAQs, um, and building an email list to send that, send those to. And, uh, and that's really, that's really like more of the top of the funnel content so once you once you do the the things that really are going to increase your conversion rate um, that's when you want to do the the content stuff is kind of like after the other stuff has been taken care of uh, making sure the images are high quality like I said earlier adding a video to the site uh, introduction video explains who you are, what you're about. Um, fixing that OG data image, adding local schema, uh, possibly disavowing some, some of the spam backlinks just to be safe. Uh, adding some location pages if you, if you uh, do business outside of Burlington and adding those to the footer, uh, as well as adding the service pages and other important pages like the contact us page to the footer. Um, and then for the Google business profile, adding appointment links, adding photos, responding to the reviews, and um, that's it. Okay. If you found this helpful, if this was uh, of value, um, and you need any help uh, or more information on the items here, feel free to reach out. I would be happy to help. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Giving it a like helps me know to make more videos like this. And if you want to learn more about SEO and um, web design and how to do SEO, uh, how to do SEO audits, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.